Hey, this is Carlin Ross, and this is NewTriBomb.com's second installment of Sex in the News. So, yes, YouTube watcha. I, uh, I went from wearing a bikini, and now I'm wearing a halter top. But um, I'm doing these segments on the weekend, and it's summer. And you know what? Feminists, we wear halter tops, and we wear bikinis, and we wear thongs, and we do all kinds of other naughty things. And um, it's funny because that comment you left on the YouTube page kind of tied into today's topic on sex in the news, which um, was prompted. I read this great article in the Times today, in the Sunday Times, about um, some new research on whether men have promiscuous natures and women have chaste natures. And I think that the comment on the outfit kind of ties into the myth that women, we, we're chaste and we don't want sex and we don't need sex. And that men, you know, it's expected. Like I know when I was a young girl, it was expected that my brother would take our showers and masturbate and he would have sex with girls and you're supposed to be this kind of chaste princess and daddy's little girl, which is really um, difficult because it infuses a lot of guilt in with your sexuality because then you feel like there's something wrong because you're having these urges and at the same time, um, you're really opening up your daughters and your sisters and, you know, for a, a potential pain because, you know, if you're not acknowledging your sexuality, then you're not going to stick a condom in your back. So then, you know, you're going to be in the heat of passion, you know, your hormones are going to be raging and you're going to be making decisions and, and you're not going to be able to be responsible and understand fully the consequences of those decisions. And you could be getting sick or you could be becoming a parent too soon. So I think that inability to acknowledge women as sexual beings is kind of um, the problem with a, a, in American culture with men being these kind of dominators and women being these submissives. And, the abstinence only that we teach our kids and it's always about this inability to accept ourselves and our children as sexual beings. And you know, and the woman one of my favorite icon of all time, Madonna, said, you know, and during an interview when they asked her about, you know, her on stage antics and, you know, she was very vocal in the nineties with condoms and open about her sex life. Like you so knew that Madonna was getting laid like all the time and her daughter was born out of marriage and they weren't even a couple. And she said, well, why can't I be thoughtful and provocative? Like, why are those mutually exclusive? Because they're not. Women, we're sexual and we're thoughtful. You can respect us and then we can still have the same urges and desires as anyone else. So I caught this article in the Times. It's called The Myth, the Math, and the Sex. Now, when I first picked this up in the Metro section, um, it started out, the first sentence was, we all know that men are promiscuous. And I was like, oh. I'm so going to write like an op-ed piece because this just like really frustrates me because it's the same kind of like reinforcing this notion that women aren't sexual, that only men are sexual. And then it turned out, as I've read further down the article, that um, new research is out saying that men and women don't really have such a wide range in, in sexuality or sexual you know, expression, that it's really quite the same. So they did these surveys where they asked men and women to um, list or give the number of how many partners have. We all know, like, just stay away from this question when you're dating. But on average, men said seven and women said four. So the sex researchers kind of scratched their heads because what does this mean? Okay, who are they having sex with? I mean, they're having sex with women. They're defining themselves as heterosexual. and They're saying seven partners. And women who say they're heterosexual are saying four. Okay, so what's that, that three-person difference? How can that be explained? So what they found is that men and women in a population must have roughly equal number of partners. You can't have this big swing. Now, first they said it could be something they call the prostitute effect. Like maybe men were going to prostitutes when they traveled, or they're also having sex with um, non-sex workers when they traveled. But they didn't really count on that because they said it would really be negligible. And the problem is that... Um, there's a 75% difference in the number of partners, and they don't believe that can be explained by the prostitute effect because it would be negligible. The most likely explanation by far is that the numbers can't be trusted. So what they're saying is that um, when men answer the surveys, they say three more and women say three less. And this is an interesting point that Dr. Gail made. He said, in fact, the survey data themselves may be part of the problem. If asked, a man believing that he should say a lot of partners may feel compelled to exaggerate. And a woman believing that she should have few partners may minimize her past. In this way, 
The false conclusions people draw from these surveys may sort of fulfill a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I think it's time that we all kind of fess up and just um, stop reinforcing these myths. And I know for myself, I'm very open about my sex life and my desires and my past. And I've had friends and boyfriends, of course, say, you know, aren't you worried that people are going to be thought, you know, think that you're a slut? Shouldn't you not use those words? Do you want to think people to think the wrong thing about you? And I said, yes, I do, because I don't care, because I'm not defining myself by that. And I think we have to start being realistic about our expectations for our daughters and our friends and our sisters, not judging as much, because when it comes down to it, I mean, men are having all the sex, they're having sex with women. So women aren't any kind of fragile beings with no sexual desire. Women have, you know, high libidos. I've had interviews with sex experts like Ian Kerner and even Betty Dodson and Candida Royale and Helen Fisher, and they all say that women have a greater capacity for sexual pleasure, that women have just as high a libido as men do. Um, so it's time to kind of, you know, just accept the way we are and kind of move on. So I love this piece in the Times. It's called The Myth, the Math, and the Sex, if you want to pick it up. You know what, I'll put a link in um, to the article because I think it's, um, it's, it's really one to kind of have in your bookmarks. And then I thought we'd do something a little fun <laughs> because we can't be all research and surveys. I caught this great article about a woman searching for her kilted hero. So this woman in the UK is going out to get a sandwich. And you know how you go out of the office and you just grab like your wallet? Well, she just grabs her wallet and she's sitting in the street waiting for her girlfriend. This young woman bumps into her and steals her wallet and takes off. And with that, this man wearing a kilt in Timberlands <laughs> goes flying after her, the woman, knocks her down, gets the wallet. Meanwhile, he was with two women. They comfort her. He comes back and gives her the wallet. So she said, it all happened so fast. I was screaming, and the next thing I knew, someone in the kilt had got my wallet back from me. Before I could thank him, he was gone. The hero of the moment, dressed in a kilt, camel-colored fleece jacket, and Timberland-style boots, gave chase towards the railway station while his two female friends helped Miss McNamara. So I put this on the boards, and the lady world, ladies were all agush, thinking that this man was a Ian McGregor look-alike, and that he was saving the day <laughs> in the UK. So we can all dream of our kilted heroes. I'm Carlin Ross, and this is our second installment of Sex in the News. Have a wonderful week.